warm welcome to Medsynapse podcast series where we bring you insightful conversation with leading experts in medical field. Hi, I'm your host Dr. Smarika Bhatt and today I'm honored to have a conversation with Dr. Imtiaz from Apollo Hospital Chennai. We are really excited to have you here. Thank you. Thank you. So, before starting with our pediatric scoliosis topic, can you a bit about your introduction regarding the progression of your journey? Fine. So, um, I did my masters in uh, orthopedic surgery from a university uh, called Rajiv Gandhi University of Health Sciences based out of Karnataka in a place called Davangiri. I did my medical curriculum the post graduation and after that uh, I got selected as one of the best orthopedic post graduates in India by the Bombay Orthopedic Society which actually helped me to grab my first uh, fellowship training in spine surgery in Switzerland. So in Switzerland, I was there for a long stint of time for about maybe a year and then like from there um, I came back to India and then I got uh, selected in Apollo, a uh, different Apollo uh, called Apollo First Med where I joined as a consultant. I was there uh, for four or five months uh, in the process. I wanted to further build up on uh, further wanted to build up on my training skills like, uh, and all those things, surgical skills I wanted to improvise. Uh, so for deformity surgeries in spine, so I applied uh, to a fellowship in Germany where I got selected and then th that, that was more like uh, the Mecca for uh, spinal tumor surgeries, I mean like so, uh, spinal deformity surgeries and uh, of course I did spinal tumor surgeries for subsequently in a place in Italy called Rizzoli which is again the Mecca for spinal tumors. We have a classification for spinal tumors, it's called Rizzoli's classification, I did it in Rizzoli. And uh, then like we, I finished with that and then like I wanted to improvise on minimally invasive spine surgeries and robotics for which I wanted to go to Singapore and I got it trained over there and finally I ended up in Chennai in the Apollo Main Hospital, I got selected and now it's been a decade in Apollo Main Hospital and uh, it's not looking back and things have been good so far by God's grace. That, that was a lovely <laughs> progression of the journey. Yeah. So let's jump right in into the interview process. So uh, let's start with the uh, first question. Can you help us understand the audience, uh, the, what is uh, scoliosis in general and what are the symptoms and cause of it? Sure. So scoliosis, when I say scoliosis, any deviation of the spine from its normal alignment. When I say the spine is normally aligned to the center, if it's deviating from its central position beyond 10 degrees, then we call it a scoliosis. So it can be an S-shaped bend or it can be a C-shaped bend. So this scoliosis, generally, we call it as idiopathic scoliosis, which is the most commonest cause. Idiopathic meaning the cause is not known. Why it's happening, it's not known. There are various theories which have been proposed, but as such 80% of the cases are idiopathic. So when I say idiopathic, there are four categories where we can split it into. An infantile scoliosis, when I say a child between the age of 0 to 3 years. When I say juvenile, someone between the age of 4 to 10 years. Somebody between the age of 11 to 17 years comes under adolescent idiopathic scoliosis. And anyone beyond 18 years comes under the adult category. So in this whole segment, the adolescent idiopathic scoliosis is the most commonest and uh, so these are the various uh, things of grades of scoliosis or what we uh, generally see and in adolescent idiopathic scoliosis the reason why it's happening is uh, what we can uh, generally put forward is uh, apart from this 80% where we say idiopathic the causes can be some neurogenic problems congenital problems wherein the uh, child has born with some birth defect wherein the bone is not completely formed or it is not completely fused which has to normally happen so that can be a reason any sort of an infection can also cause uh, scoliosis and any sort of other uh, tumor conditions any break in the bone can also cause a deformity that can happen so this is about it and if you ask about the uh, symptoms of uh, scoliosis so when I see a patient uh, if I see there is a deformity, an S-shape or C-shape deformity, if I'm able to observe, then what we do is we look into the shoulder levels. If the shoulders are well balanced or is it one higher than the other? If the, the pelvis, if the hips are one higher and one lower. So these are things first we try to assess. Then what we do is we do something called a bending test where we ask the patient to bend forward. We try to examine the patient. Some patients who have a severe scoliosis in the upper back, that is the thoracic spine, so what happens is the rib starts to protrude or jet out. 
so it appears like a rib hump the hub the hump so there, there's a component of kyphosis a hunched back to it similarly in the lower back the trunk just shifts out okay the pelvic just jets out and so there will be a truncal shift asymmetry will be there so these are things and because of that you might find a little bit of limb length discrepancy happening so these are the most common things we see and some people who have neuromuscular scoliosis because of some muscular dystrophy some like genetic problems like marfan syndrome or some other syndromes okay and uh, down syndrome or these things they also present with it. some people have a tuft of hair which can be related to some myelomeningocele or meningocele those people also present with scoliosis but since we are concentrating on adolescent idiopathic scoliosis leaving ahead all these things the first symptoms that i mentioned is the commonest thing that we look into the head should be centrally placed it should not be shifted out like that so those are the symptoms that we look at so um so in a child if their sleeping position is little disturbed or even in adults also yeah. if their sleeping position is not appropriate hmm. so it will also lead to scoliosis no 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 so that's why so there are some myths that ex, uh, ex, uh, i mean like uh, it pre uh, prevails in the society that scoliosis can happen because of this because of that uh, which i will obviously explain to you subsequently okay okay yeah. that was perfectly yeah. explained so we'll move on to yeah. our next yeah, question sure. so for our next question how does we diagnose scoliosis and okay. you can share any uh, the patients you have diagnosed it and you can share the history how you were actually it resulted in the scoliosis diagnosis okay so uh, it, it all starts with the history so when it's a very small child the child wouldn't be in a position to give us a proper history right so the mother starts noticing that the child was all fine up to a particular age and suddenly they started noticing a deformity that was there in the back and then like uh, they get uh, alarmed and then they start consulting a doctor and then they keep uh, checking and finally they reach up to us and then we decide as to how severe the deformity is so any deformity which is less than 30 degrees to 40 degrees which is we feel if it is not progressive beyond a particular age we feel if it's not we do regular checkups and all those things but anything less than 40 degrees we generally don't avoid i and mean, we advise surgery as such hmm? there are multiple modalities of treatment like bracing where like we use belts belts have to be worn for a certain period of time which i'll explain to you and apart from that some sort of uh, shrot okay there's a physical therapies which are there existing so those things can also be uh, done but having said all these things a, a curvature if it is less than 10 degrees it is only observation if it is between 10 to 25 degrees or even if it's like up to 35 to 40 degrees when we feel that okay this is going to remain like that we try to control the progression of the curvature by means of bracing and that's how we see it further on okay yeah so that was a great insight of, uh, about your journey so the next question will be how early we diagnose the scoliosis in the children okay so the screening of scoliosis what we do is um, in schools if we are able to have screening Uh, sessions for scoliosis so it really helps because children the earlier we diagnose them earlier we will know that there is some deformity and then this child needs an observation we have to follow up and all those things but for unknown reasons scoliosis is more common in girls than in boys is it yes yes it's more common in girls than in boys that is the reason a girl who has scoliosis ideally we would say in the 5th grade and the 7th grade that is like between the age of 10 years and 12 years we will do two screenings to check if the curve is fine or is it progressing further on or things like that. and for our boys 13 years and 14 years we just look have a look into it main problem of the deformity progressing happens when there is a growth spurt that is the growth of the child happens more between 10 to 18 years hmm. of age that adolescent yeah, period yeah, right so that's the reason yeah. adolescent as that we call adolescent idiopathic scoliosis is more common so during that growth spurt phase we'll have to be watchful about these uh, patients so screening is ideal to do in this particular thing okay so as you have touched upon uh, it's more common in girls as compared to boys mm -hmm. so do this uh, scoliosis run in family as well yes scoliosis runs in families a person who is already uh, some uh, a sibling who has been having scoliosis there is a high chance that it can happen there are there are studies which have exhibited the same there have been some genes that they have identified but then like uh, uh if you ask me that is it like uh, going to progress the same way that it happened in the other sibling no we can we can uh, clear cut i mean we can clearly say that 
but definitely it runs in families okay. and we have to be watchful about that that was great insight regarding yeah. school choices so we'll wrap up the session by one last uh, question sure. that is uh, what are the myths associated with school uses yeah. the myths associated is first thing is if if i have a little bit of a limb length discrepancy will i get school uses if you ask no that's the first thing i'm going to carry heavy weights or bags to school will that cause school uses the answer is no okay the third thing is i'm going to sleep in abnormal postures okay some postures like this and that will it cause uh, issues like scoliosis answer is no okay and uh, fourth thing is some sort of strenuous activity some sort of uh, physical activity i do and i stretch my back and i hurt my back will it that cause scoliosis no so that's about it so I thank you so much for sharing your lovely <laughs> insights sure, sure, with sure, us sure. it thank was you, a great pleasure you. to have you my here pleasure, my pleasure <laughs> sir. thank you thanks a lot And thank you to our viewers for tuning in. And remember, if you are a healthcare professional who is eager to delve deeper into medical topics or have questions, do not hesitate us to join on Medsynapse platform. Medsynapse platform is not just a resource; it's a dynamic space where you can connect with your medical peers or participate in meaningful discussions and contribute to the ongoing evolution of healthcare. So until next time, stay healthy. Take care. Bye bye.